Hello, my name's Fred. I'm here to explain my idea about the concept. A little bit of background on myself. I am a telecommunications engineer. I did 12 years in the British Army and 33 years with the British Foreign Office. I've travelled a lot. The concept is, in its basic form, that four countries break up. Each will have three voted in members to the High Council, making 12. Three from England, three from Scotland, three from Wales, and three from the whole of Ireland, subject to agreement. One from Ulster, and two from the Republic. The High Council to move every year, from London to Edinburgh, Cardiff, and at Downpatrick, County Down. Where it is sitting for that particular year, an extra member is voted in who becomes equivalent to the president, not quite on that status, but a guardian. He or she is called the, the high councillor. Where we have the 12 plus one, they direct um, our EU MPs so that they can try and get the EU more democratic at the top echelon. So they are like a, a block vote. So that's the concept. It's also beneficial to other countries uh, in a similar position where provinces or states are, have arguments with their uh, capital cities. Underneath the concept is what I call the bundle. The House of Commons to reduce to initially to 201 with a far-sighted thing of 101. So it can't go to 101 um, straight away, it, do it in steps. That will save money. The English House of Parliament to have companies around it that produce money to feed into the Parliament so it reduces the cost of Parliament again. And where there is profits out of these companies that they go and can go forward um, to help the National Health Service. The House of Lords to go sideways under the Queen's House. I did 12 years of the British Army. The Queen is very important. So those sitting there at the moment will still assist in investigations like that dreaded fire that happened last year. Very important people. But because they're not voted in, they are not part of the democratic system as I look at it. They are representatives of legacy. As I said, the English Parliament, to, the aim is to, to go down to 201. House of Lords go sideways under the Queen and where the House of Lords sitting at the moment, representatives from our Commonwealth nations. Not to be there for making laws, but to be there more of a handshake with the High Council and the English Parliament to bring the Commonwealth back into a closer relationship. A quite important things from the past, from the First World War, Second World War. Where we needed help, they came. I've told you about the concept and under the concept is the bundle and hanging off the bundle there's quite a few other subjects. One part of the bundle is to change miles to kilometres on all our roads. And this, can, this can be done really uh, fairly simply by having our schools, our students in the schools um, to adopt a sign and at some stage to change over to kilometres. The south of Ireland already has uh, gone over to kilometres. Um, there's only three countries left in the world, I understand. One is the United States, one is uh, Myanmar, and the third is us. So by changing over it will make things a lot simpler. That's the first project of the roads. Uh, the second project is to change from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. You may smile about that one, <laughs> but it can be done. This is my challenge, it's not your challenge. I just have to try and push it through. Uh, then we go on to the, the prisons to have 
not quite a prison, an open prison to a point in the Falklands, like apprentice colleges. So when they return to the UK, to the mainland, um, they have some, some skills to work on. The benefit of that is that it will uh, reduce the costs overall that we're spending towards uh, keeping them in prison. But now I'm going to go on to the really, really bad, bad people. The murderers, uh, the rapists and things of that type, of that elk. As long as they are proven without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, that they have committed one of these hideous crimes, to be dropped on the South Pole with some of the uh, protective clothing, not much, and they walk out of the South Pole. Nature will take them out, we don't take them out. Hopefully, it should reduce the number of prisoners that we have. We're paying for them. Every day is something coming out of your pocket, paying for them to be in prison. And we've got to go on to the next part is um, charities. Merge charities together so there's less overheads at the top end. Um, some of the charities, the CEOs are earning above £100,000 a year. That's uh, money that can be used elsewhere within the charity system. I'm going to change subject now to what I call hospital ships. At the moment we have two super aircraft carriers. We haven't got the, um, we haven't got the, the, the Navy staff to, to keep both going. One, I'm looking at changing to a hospital ship. Um, my friends in uh, Australia, in Tangsville, a hospital ship goes out from there and they go to Papua New Guinea and they give health service to, to the coastal villages and inland as well with um, inflatables. Uh, why the hospital ship? Well, why not? Uh, maybe to come under the UN, a UN hospital ship, uh, Queen Elizabeth. Now I'm going to go on to the pound euro. For the pound, to not merge but have a very sh hard handshake together so it's still independent from the euro. Every time we change from pounds to euros and euros to pounds, we lose 5%. That's 5% that could be in your pocket to spend on extra goods and things. And some nice wines, if you like wines. So the pound to change to a pound euro and for currency and link together. A, a soft link first and then a hard link later on. Now I'm going to go on to nuclear power to try and reduce our input to nuclear power stations and change to wind turbines and also tidal power. Basically moon power because the moon has the effect on our tides. Therefore, for example, uh, in the Strangford Narrows, in Northern Ireland, Strangford Lock, there's a, an eight uh, knot tidal race. And with units that produce electricity, to drop them on the bottom and to get electricity off them. It's possible. A subject I'm going to come to now is schools. Teachers teach, parents chastise. And what I'm looking at is that three parents look after a classroom, not the parents of uh, the students, other parents. This is aimed at the reduction of bullying. And uh, if there's any problems uh, with children, that are uh, out of line, uh, that a system is set up that uh, the child has to uh, do a little bit of cleaning up. <clears throat> In Singapore, it's very clean. 
because the streets are clean, uh, there's no chewing gum. So you get the idea. There's plenty of chewing gum all over our pavements and they're just waiting for those children that are out of line uh, for misconduct um, to do an hour or so of uh, clearing the chewing gum off the pavement. Now uh, the parent has to be there to make sure everything is in order. So and to maybe just a good thing to make it as inconvenient as possible for the parent. Another part hanging off the off the bundle is what I call the cone and the cone is the difference between the lower paid and the highest paid within a company. So as you work up the cone um, to different layers then you obviously get more money. Obviously this has to be done over time. Um, ever since Maggie Thatcher um, things have got a little bit out of hand between the top wages and the lowest wages. Uh, the base mark is a minimum wage and through each layer multiplications of the minimum wage agreement. Then I'm looking at the build of companies. Uh, within a company you take out over 100 percent. The first five percent for the disabled, the second five percent, ex-military and similar. They can work in between but that, that's the basis of that. From 10 percent up to 50 percent UK and Irish citizens. From 50 percent to 60 percent Commonwealth citizens. And you ask why Commonwealth citizens? As I, as I mentioned in one of the other uh, parts of the bundle, they came to help, help us out at a particular time when we were nearly on our knees. Could not have survived the First and Second World Wars without them. Therefore they have a special place in my heart and make the jobs available from that side. From 60% to 90% EU citizens. From 90% to 100% where we can to use refugees and others to help us along. Instead of us paying money out to keep them in housing and other um, uh, necessity, necessities, um, the offer of work is there for the last 10%. Initially it's a guide, this 100% of a company, and then it will come into law at a later stage. The aim is to try and reduce the pressures on our social security system. And with that, maybe, maybe a drop, a drop in direct tax. That's the bit that you want to do. That's the bit that you want to enjoy. The money that you earn, you spend on yourself or on your, on your mortgage. It's up to you, not taken away from the state. 